Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order and the Republic have fallen, with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. This message is a warning and a reminder for any surviving Jedi. Trust in the Force. They've outgrown their age of rebellion, dull the Empire's edge. Defeated Imperial generals and the Pirate Queen's dredge. They've been soldiers and scoundrels, what's there left to be? How about Las Acolytes looking for their Force and destiny? There's a seer, hermit, investigator, and teacher better watch your back. A reviver ring's gonna reach you. Will this team find the light or will darkness win the day? Find out with the heroes of the hardy and wave. Welcome to Heroes of the Hydean Way. This is a Star Wars actual play podcast, and we're playing in Fantasy Flight Games Force and Destiny System using the Chronicles of the Gatekeeper Adventure developed by Tim Cox and Max Brook. This is Act 1, Episode 9, a check in episode. And I'm Ben, the GM for this adventure. Hello there. I'm Skip Gobi, a Calarian Seeker Hermit, and this is my best friend in the world, Gudgeon the Sarfray. I call him Gudge, but you should probably make sure he's okay with nicknames. I heard that some beings really don't like nicknames. Skip is a bit short to nickname, though. I, I've always thought it'd be really neat to get some sort of longer name. Like, I don't know, something more heroic. Maybe someday. You know, like, Skip the Courageous, or Sir Skip the Daring, or Oh, Skip the Handsome, you saved me from that horde of angry I don't know, Trandoshans! Hey! What? Not all Trandoshans are mercenaries and you know problems. We're we're not. Skip just said angry, not mercenary. Well, well we're not all angry not now, are we? Kova? Statement. It was just the first I'm one that popped into my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, friends. Besides, friends. one syllable name. That's all you need. Oh. Speaking of, I'm Kesh. I'm a Trandoshan seer, and I don't want any titles. I don't need another name. I'm not angry. Hmm. Ooh, Lord High Lord Skippington the First. <laughs> Interesting. I see that. That is a name I can get behind. Skippington. Although maybe not High Lord yet. You have to build up to High Lord because that way, then you can be. Lord, High Lord, Hillary Alorik. Well, not me per se, but we can definitely work on those those subsequent names. Um, how would you feel starting out as maybe a, a duke or a doge? I'm not actually sure what a doge is. It sounds vaguely strange, but intriguing. Or, um, well, you could just be skip and then add to it, skipalarius. Or Detective Skip, most smartest investigator perhaps uh, Malastair has ever seen. Perhaps avoid the double superlatives? It sounds a little much. I don't know what that means. Look, I knew the smartest investigator that Malastair had ever seen. (laughs) (laughs) Buckle up, here we go. (laughs) Right up to the day when he lost his title. As, As Koba... The Doug Investigator. I knew a lot of detectives in my time. But the best one, the smartest one, you know, you always think, ah, that guy, he'll, he'll live to retirement, have a nice long life, being able to relax knowing that he put away a bunch of bad scum and villainy types. Or maybe... You'll go out in a blaze of glory, saving like a bus full of children or something, but, but no. She died face down in a puddle in an alley, trying to apprehend some two bit thief. Just zigged right when he should have zagged left. What are the bits very expensive, maybe? No. There's the high value bits? No, the, the total value of everything that kid had stolen was like 300 credits. Well, to be fair, that can that can be a lot to some, but um, no. it's a very, very sad story, and we should move on. Quickly, please. And welcome to Nighttime on the Hydean Way. 
We're here with our four guests, trying to see how their choices have added up in the adventures that they have gone through. Oh, please don't make me do math. How did we get <laughs> here? It's, it's it's a metaphor. Skip, it's a metaphor. It's, it's part of a conversation. They're, they're, they're encouraging us to be introspective. And it doesn't matter how we got here. Maybe what? we were always we're here. Chatting. What is this number above my head? It looks like a three. It's probably the number of minutes before you die. <laughs> Koba. In, in, in that case, I would say I'm winning with this big six above my head. What's a six? I'm at a bad angle. Do I have one? It looks like a zero. Oh. With our guest here, we have Lord High Lord Hillary, Lord Ulrich. Good evening. Day. Span. Hello. Since you've come to Arboine, this has to have been a big change for you. With the trials that you've gone through, including almost losing your long-term traveling companion, Cash. Hi there. How have you been keeping centered on finding the good in people and keeping it from turning into a hatred of them? Well, to, to, to be fair, um, most, most everyone that we've met on this planet, aside from our initial encounter with the rather impressive creature that tried to murder us. Um, they've mostly been very good people. We've, we've had brief encounters with the less savory of the variety of these people, but we're part of something trying to be better. Um, I mean, and Cash, I, everything's... She's fine. She's fine. It's, it's fine. And I have nothing to worry about. And we will continue to find the good in people as we move forward, and we will we will help them because we need to. And where do you find this need coming from? Well, there's so much shadow in this galaxy that um, it's it's good to to shed a little bit of light where you can. I see. Is it a calf? I'm going to pour myself some calf. I'm just going to sit here and enjoy a nice hot beverage. And be centered. That's that's a good way to put it. Mm. Ooh. That's calf? Calf? Oh. Hush, tush. Drink the calf. It's it's quite lovely. It's very calming. <laughs> what? <laughs> I figure Hillary's got a tolerance. It probably doesn't really amp him up. Oh, until God. suddenly it doesn't. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. And now, Koba, hmm. you have been presented with a problem that has a great many parts to it. Now, how have you kept yourself from being pulled into the study to the exclusion of taking action? Look, I'm going to be the one asking the questions here, buddy. <laughs> Who are you? How did we get here? <laughs> what have you done with all of my weapons? You see, the weapons were checked at the door. You can get them back when you leave. Huh. I'm pretty sure that you have a claim chit for them. Are we, are we being recorded? Yes. For there what was purpose? this nice little <laughs> cheddar fan that was Where? around to insure it. <laughs> Where's the antidote? Koba, perhaps I just, just mute myself. I'm dying over here. Just answer the questions and we'll get through this challenge and back to our current mission. Uh, okay. How have I kept myself from being pulled into study to the exclusion of action? Well, here's the thing about study. It's nothing like actual boots-on-the-ground experience. You can't solve anything just by reading the books, examining all of the details safe behind your cozy desk or, uh, as the case may be, barn loft evidence dungeon. So I see. A shovel. In my head. That's how. You have a shovel in your head? I imagine a deck of Sabbath cards. As I'm working through a problem, I mentally shuffle this mental deck of Sabbath cards. Once I'm confident the deck has been thoroughly randomized, which with a deck of Sabbath cards take about 11 shovels to really uh, mathematically reach that point, I know it's time to move on. Uh, yes, I see. Do you? I'm sure that you're one who is great at the Sabak tables. I'm sure that some of our listeners would love to have a chance to play with you. 
Uh, not much of a player. But Savick has its own purposes. And now, Skip. That's me! As you've been exploring Quillas, you've been exposed to a great many aches of society. How will you help guide those you're helping into a mentality of being open-minded to change? I'm supposed to guide people? You're the protagonist, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it has been rumored from those of us watching that you have a desire to help open people's minds. Well? Possibly even to find something new. And this could be a drive to get others to see something new as well. Well, I suppose if you mean something new, I I don't really like to stick around the same place, you know, for really all that long. I get kind of bored. I, I mean, this place is really neat with all the trees and the cool ways that you sleep, but I, I don't think I could do it for, for really all, all, all that long. I mean, if you just sit in one place forever, then all kinds of bad things happen, like like all these problems that are happening here, and it's probably because so many other people are bored. It's when you're bored is when, you know, there's just people problems, and you have to deal with all the making decisions, people, and agreeing, and meetings, and voting, and things like that. That's just really... I, I think that if everyone traveled more and met lots of more different types of people like and everyone here is a bird i mean and that's fine and this is offensive i well i guess i just think that when everyone is all just too much the same that's when they all start fighting or something i don't know there's a lot of pressure right now no one's saying anything. Drink the calf. <laughs> it's something to do with your hands. Okay. Just don't slurp. That's rude. Oh, this is bitter. It's supposed to be like that. Only really bitter. It's it's excellent. Here, I think there's some, some sugar over here. Ooh. Yes, I'll drink that instead. No! <laughs> and that brings us to Cash. <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to get to me. We try and get to our revered guests in their own time. Hmm. As you've shown the party, you're willing to protect those around you. And you've done so through being the rock in the path of power. How are you keeping this as a matter of protection and not purely forcing your own judgment on others? Well, while it's been said that I can be opinionated... I've been trying to listen to those around me. It's not always my call on when this group takes a particular action or who or how we help someone. More importantly, I've been using my gift to get a sense of what someone might do before they do it. Essentially, not coming to conclusions on my own, if, if that's what you mean by being a rock. It is to a certain point, yes. Hmm. And also that you have put yourself into danger at least twice that we have seen. I is that all? I Let's see. Sorry, I'm getting a note. It is four times. That that sounds more like me. <laughs> and now I can see the finger to the ear. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Please hold for this update. <laughs> uh, I, we need some canned laughter and clapping. <laughs> uh, I mean, Ben can accompany them. Maybe <clears throat> we just need to all 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 clap at the same time. <laughs> no, we already know that we can clap can just, at the like, same time. Loop. It. No, no, but it doesn't have to be all at the same time. It's just <laughs> they can just loop all of ours on top of each other. Just mash up the clap. <laughs> the clap mash up. May it work for cabbage noises. Oh, yeah. I I really need to go listen to that sometime. Cabbage noises. <laughs> I still don't get it. <laughs> Now we're back from commercial break. 
Ah, uh, yes. Investigator Koba, how do you discern the small and short-term actions leading to large effects and still be able to act? Go with my gut. Okay, I can tell by the way you're looking at me you want me to say something more. I, I, <sighs> how is it that you've given that short an answer for something? That's not like you at all. <laughs> And does your gut provide some explanation as to the likely outcomes of your actions? Or is it some other sense that you might have? Look, I've seen a lot of things. Not not enough to have that talent, I guess, but <laughs> in a general sense. and Not mechanically. <laughs> I know any situation, every situation is too complex to ever really know what's going to happen or meaningfully predict what the future holds and trying to that usually just leads to more problems and so you just gotta make backup plans follow your instincts and if you're like me and have a bit of experience under your belt you can maybe narrow down the guesses from some incalculably huge number to I knew there'd be math. Only two or three trillion possibilities, which of course is still far too large to actually hold in your head. I think going with your gut makes a lot of sense, because if you're hungry, that can change a lot of things. If you're really hungry, you can be kind of cranky. Or if you're really hungry, that means maybe you need to go move on to a different location, because you've eaten all the food that you can in that place, and people are sick of tipping you. Maybe we should go ahead and feed Kesh, then. There's some biscuits. I wasn't going to say it. I, ha- I biscuit hate biscuits. Baron. Oh, come now. They're hmm. shrimp flavored. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Skip would probably be fine with that, but Ryan was just like... Ryan says, no to shrimp, shrimp biscuits. <laughs> Noted. Whenever you visit, we will not have that food. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if there's sugared shrimp, then... uh. And calves in. <laughs> <laughs> Candy to kinoderms. Let's move on to that. The little meaty treats. Lord Hillary. Yes. It's okay for me to call you Lord Hillary? Oh, you can call me what you want. I, I will respond to most things. Um, for good or for ill. You have shown yourself to be caring and a center to the party. But without cash, you had seemed lost. How do you draw the balance between being an advisor and taking glorious leadership? Well, I I don't know that I would call it glorious. Uh, It can be rather at times onerous, to be be fair and honest. Uh, it's, It's a pattern that I fall into, and it's one thing when you have an established group dynamic, uh, and then you, you have your role, and it's a completely different thing when you've had this established group dynamic and suddenly there's a hole and then you're left figuring out what should be more important at the moment what the missing person valued and how to bring that voice back into the party um and how to fill your role continuing forward and it's basically think of it kind of like a top Everyone's in their spot, and you're spinning along fine. And then somebody gets off, and everything goes crazy. So I don't know about finding the balance so much as winging it madly. It's, so wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. So when I was gone, were you... I did brilliantly. You were fine. Uh, we, 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 were, we were coming for you. I, 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 I missed you too, Hillary. <laughs> Oh, we don't even know our host's name. Cash, Cash, what? shh, we've got to ask our host's name. What? What's your name? What's your name? My name is Walther. Oh, lovely. Nice to meet you, Walther. Well, why don't you ask another question of someone else? It's one <laughs> syllable too many, but sure. <laughs> oh, what lovely calf. Where do you come from where people ride tops? <laughs> Haven't you ever been to a carnival? No, don't don't answer that. Um, Walther, if you would con- continue, this is just going to devolve into another conversation, and 
Yes, I think you've seen how that goes. Fine, I want to hear my carnival story. <laughs> Who did you shoot and why? And was it on Malastair? <laughs> was it a clown? Did you shoot a clown? <laughs> because I couldn't blame you. If I'm being completely honest, I might be an entertainer, but I have lines to draw. This could go on for a while, Walther. Oh yes, so I see. Now, to move along, Skip. Hi again. Hello there. It's so wonderful talking to you. You have shown great care for your companions with how you've been willing to rush after them and help them out when rescuing others. Why have you acquiesced to your companions' judgment when it comes to action? Ooh, you noticed that, huh? Okay, uh, well, hmm. Hmm. Well, if it were up to Gudge and I, 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 I would just kind of dive on in. I, I like to think that I'm a creature of action, <laughs> you know, and bravery. But, you know, I mean... Gudge and I can get through some really tight spots, and we're pretty nimble, and I, I suppose if we're being really honest, we don't really have anything to, you know, kind of lose. <laughs> I mean, and Hillary has has a family, so, so, so he needs to, you know, make sure he stays alive for them. And, and also, he's so tiny, you know, and, and well, Cash, Cash is... So, so big, and and can't fit into a lot of tricky situations. Did you catch that, Hillary? I totally didn't say old this time. I'm learning. You did, you did a very good job, but it is generally frowned upon to draw attention to size differences. I mean, oh. I don't mind. I am quite small, aside from you know my belly. But I haven't been doing as much acrobatics as usual. I figured we thought those are. Sex? You're fine. You're fine. You're doing. You're doing beautifully. You do fit in a lot of spaces. Throughout the rest of the oh right, right, right. okay so uh hmm um judgment. sorry uh hmm well so okay so even though I I know that I can sort of you know jump up and do whatever I want I guess I'm trying to remember that the others are are not used to the life of kind of you know running around and being carefree and spontaneous and I'm hoping that maybe I'll learn something, I guess. And maybe, maybe I'll rub off a little bit on them too, and they'll be a little bit more willing to kind of jump up and, and have fun. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, th this whole trip is a little kind of spontaneous. They all did sort of just agree to, you know, we've got the, the fun little box here. Should we show them the box? No. <coughs> There are cameras. What's wrong with you? It's a lovely box. Okay, well, totally, totally not a box. Uh, but there was, there was a reason that we all, you know, spontaneously took off in our in our little turtle ship and came here, and so so that's kind of fun. Uh, so they can be spontaneous sometimes. Was that enough of an answer? I, yes, I don't... Well, most certainly it is. Thank Hello. you very much, Skip. Oh, you're welcome. Right. I forget how to do polite things. <laughs> You're doing fine. May maybe a little bit less sugar, though. That's fair. <laughs> the cameras are just picking up on, like, Skip just, Skip's just bouncing now yep. in the chair. <laughs> We're getting to the point where you're, you're, you're hitting the, the vibration, and you're just like... <laughs> <clears throat> I am getting a note here from my producer about what does Koba have against Darth Pelagius? The wise? <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you pay attention to everything that's happened in this galaxy for the last, uh, conservatively 50 years, everything, everything goes back to this one intersection point. Darth Plagueis. Hmm. That is a very interesting theory. I can't say that I've heard that one before. And if you follow the clues, you realize that Darth Plagueis has been orchestrating everything. The blockade at Naboo. The Clone Wars. The rise of Emperor Palpatine. Palpatine would have you think that he's working for his own purposes 
And maybe he believes that, but no. He's just another puppet. So I see. This is good to know. To the best of my understanding, it all began on Naboo. In one of the underwater cities of the native species there, the Gungans. Oh no. You see, they don't tell you this, but the real Darth Plagueis, he's a Gungan. Flashbacks. So I see. <laughs> he found a way to transcend death using the dark side of the Force. And he's a masterful method actor. Even Jedi Masters can't see through him. An actor, you say? All they see is a jester, a trickster, a dim witted layabout. Mm. Hoba? Yeah. Perhaps we should. Not air this as of yet. You're right. If anybody serving Plagueis sees this transmission. Yes, yes. They'll know we're on to him. Danger, yes, we They'll rub us out. We we should avoid this, yes. Make us disappear. Good hunting though. Good hunting. And now for Kesh. You alone among the heroes have had an experience beyond the normal. Has this allowed you to understand your motivations to use your gift at all? If so, how? It's... I suppose it has in a number of ways. Sort of following up after your last question, I have had some strong feelings about what I've needed to do with these gifts. Wrongs to write... And changes to make. But I wasn't thinking far enough ahead. That experience has shown me how I can do better than, than I used to. I've made a lot of impulsive decisions in my life. And in about a decade or two, it comes back around and bites me. But I have a chance to do this right this time. And as long as she and her agents continue to help guide me, I know I will stay on the right path. Hmm. Even, you know, if one of her agents is a frail old looking human, I'm not judging. Isn't it true that sometimes it is in the least likely of spaces that we can find true centers and true power. That's an interesting way to put it. Sometimes you have to get knocked down to get a new perspective on a situation. Now see, when I said that when we were at the bar and I got knocked off the, uh, the, the well, the table, you said that wasn't a valid thought. I call shenanigans. Well, look, I'm, look, this is between me and Walther here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to remember this double standard. When I get knocked down, <laughs> I get up again. <laughs> They're never going to keep you down. You're right. How did you know that's what I was going to say? <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling. It's almost like a song in my memory. Ooh, are we singing now? I finished the coffee ah. and the sugar. What were you guys talking about? I need a whiskey drink. That was so much sugar. That was so much sugar. Gudge, please say you had some. <laughs> Qu <laughs> Quick skip dig. <laughs> dig up that ether. You found a choco graph. <laughs> what is happening? Is is this what you meant by like places and is is this the <laughs> this is just too many crossover episodes. It, yeah. it, is this the experience beyond the norm? Am I just <laughs> imagining this? You have touched the veil, Kesh. Welcome. We are all here. I don't say that. <laughs> not that close to death. Oh, it was a metaphorical veil and not even the one you're talking about. The thin veil between reality and the unknown. The force connects us all. And it also apparently connects my Twitch channel. 
<laughs> you were quite the popular streamer. <laughs> Did you know this is the first time I've had calf in three days? As you see before you, you all have a polyhedron that we as a corporation would like you to roll. I remember this. I had one for my uh, crates, crates, caverns and crates game when I was young. So who shall roll this thing first? Can we eat those things after? They look like candy. No, 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 no. Do not put that in your mouth. Oh, it's been so long since I've been with a toddler. Hey. It is extruded plastic, so it is not exactly recommended for you to have in your eating areas. Do you know that Calarians can absolutely eat excruciated plastic? Don't eat it. I'm just messing with him, Guillory. Mm -hmm. I just pronounced it with the G. That's wrong. I know that. Oh, okay, we're going to never give you this much sugar again. <laughs> Everybody make note. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry for Ben having to edit this episode. Yeah. I'm going to be laughing I think it'll so be good much. For Ben's I'm just going to be like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Everyone else can see so what I deal with. <clears throat> Okay, so Walter, 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 th, th, right. So, Walter, I can't help but notice I don't have a number, per se. I have rather the absence of a number. Yes. I feel a bit left out. You see, this is a number that is based upon the amount that one does some scary stuff, such as a particular trend ocean. There is also a part of this number that is based around a amount that combat has happened, which, to my understanding, you have not partaken in. Mm, true, true. Dealing with a the ethereal force and pulling on it in a somewhat, shall one surmise, a selfish fashion. What? What? Why is my number only a six then? I'm scary lots more times than six times. Maybe you were appropriately scary. <laughs> what? I don't know. This all seems very arbitrary to me, okay? I'm just trying to make sense of it. I didn't get a number. Because I'm not scary, apparently. But at you're, least I you're, get You're really not. Draw. You're kind of adorable. I can be scary. I've been angry since we got to this planet. I thought you've been Does angry much longer than Apparently that. you've only been... What is that? A four, five, angry? It's a six. <laughs> what? You, you, we can't be tied, Koba. It's just, it's just a Doug six. We can't be tied. That's it. I've got to be scary right now. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go, Trandoshan? <laughs> I can take children. I can take children. Doug. Sit, both of Hillary, you. Hillary, if you want, lap. if you want, if you want, I have two, and that means that I could split it and share it, and you could have one. I wouldn't want to take anything away from you, darling. I will I will roll my own polyhedron to whatever purpose this is. All right. All right uh, I apologize, Walther. We get a little worked out. I mean, maybe somebody else with a bigger number like Cobra or Cash could share. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I want all of them. One might think there's something to do with the <sighs> score well, I guess that's why the selfish was there, I guess. All right, Hillary, why don't you roll first? <laughs> oh, very well. Hillary is standing up on the chair, leaning over the desk with a die. Okay, and the number we have is nine. What does that do? Does it do anything? Because I really don't remember. How, how many works. sides are in this thing anyway? Looks like ten. Ten, yeah. That's... <sighs> now Hillary has a bigger <laughs> number than all of us. I'm sorry, somebody going to call Hacks? Christine? <laughs> I know I'm in character. I don't. I don't think that's how this works, Cash. I, the the numbers. Okay, Walter, if you would explain. Yes, you see, as you take the polyhedral number that you have just rolled, that nine, you say, and then add it to the number that you came in with, subtracting the number that had been floating over your head, 
we then come up with a final number that you will go into your next set of adventures with. In this case, it is a 59. Because uh, all of you have arrived here today with a 50. That's much higher than 6. I think Hillary is winning. <sighs> what did I win? I mean, I'd rather Hillary win than Koba. Please, please don't start this again. They're so competitive. They really are. Do you want any of this pop maze while they compete? Uh-oh. Oh, yes. That what, sounds what's lovely. what's Thank going you. on here? <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> Being Koba, where did those dice come from? <laughs> <laughs> they don't even have numbers on them. They're just symbols. That one looks like a TIE fighter wing. They're used for three-dimensional Hintaro. <laughs> I was rolling to... I was rolling my brawl. <laughs> a brawl? <laughs> throw a punch. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> then you fell off your chair? Apparently. <laughs> I failed with two threat. Well, are you going to get back up? As I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some of this pop maze too? No. Not you. Would you like some of this pop maze too, Skip? It's quite tasty. Just, K- Koba, just go s- and uh, kind of like lifts Koba. Moving him back to his chair. Just stay over there. If I had any doubt that this was going to be a Springer episode. Um, <laughs> I, as, as I use my, t- my force rating of two for the first for the pop and, and Skip doesn't see it because Skip reaches <laughs> over to get popcorn. <laughs> and Hillary doesn't react because he's familiar with that circumstance. So yes, I have a 59. What does that mean? Do we want to give a recap to like the whole morality system? here it's probably a good idea yeah that's probably a good idea I mean, it would make too much sense but... yeah like, like yeah because I, I think there was a question about where the 50 came from and then uh over to you professor modi <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. i mean we've already established lorenzo's here well all right fine i'll pan the camera over <laughs> uh so we started the game with we each had a morality score, which is on a z- 0 to 100 scale or a 1 to 100 scale. I don't know that it can go to 0. Characters by default start at 50. You can start at a different value if you uh, decide to do that instead of taking extra money or XP at the beginning. But we all took extra money and or XP, so we stayed at 50 to begin with. Modi, you didn't say that in the right voice. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> my apologies. I'm, I've come down with something, I suppose. Uh, this is based upon a mathematical construct from the Jedi Master uh, Finry Gamow. Master Gamo had a, a great many things to enter into his model for how morality and other things in the galaxy worked and determined that, on average, uh, most... <laughs> Most beings have uh, 50 of these uh, gamos, is what they're called. And so statistically speaking, uh, the four of you would, it, it would seem, likely have 50 gamos at this, at this present time. But uh, according to Fenry's fifth law, the events that sometimes transpire in one's life when they become... Finry refers to this as uh, people who are player characters um, because they play a significant role in events in the galaxy in some fashion. You see, that's where that term comes from. So when uh, some beings that are player characters are involved in significant events... They may gain or lose gamos, and it's really uh, there's there's a there's a lot of complicated equations. Uh, but in a nutshell, when we run things through this large machine here, which Modi now I guess pats loop, with loop. two of his hands, <laughs> that looks like <laughs> the Price is Right wheel. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, then we then we can measure, or at least n- nearly approximate, the number of gamos with which you are left. Now, 
a uh, good person is thought to be a, an individual with more gamos, especially if you surpass the uh, uh, 70 or so gamma range. Bad people are thought to have less gamos, and they, especially in the lower, below 30 range, uh, you should probably watch out for those types. So, Lord, uh, hi, Lord um, Hillary. Uh, based on my calculations, I... Let's see. Uh, take the 10, carry the 1. Oh. I have determined that within a, a 98% probability that you are at approximately 59 gamos. Hillary stands up and does the suspender tug of pride. So Hillary is a better person than the rest of us. Yeah, that tracks. Measurably, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Professor, quantifiably. for quantifying this. And yes, now can we get the other three of you to roll your polyhedrals? Oh, this gamo business sounds like nonsense to me. S skip your next. Okay, wow. I... I... I rolled a real one to get a sound, too. And both of them are threes. So I guess you rolled a three. Ah. And it seems like destiny. Now. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, that one says three. Well, these are gamma readers. Uh, these, these polyhedrons, they are... You see, in the act of rolling them, they kind of measure... Anyway. Um, uh, skip. So I have a two above my head. And a three on the little stabby thing. Yes. And then 50, so that's... <sighs> yeah, I don't do math. Ah, well, <laughs> uh, it's quite simple, in fact. You take the value you received from the polyhedral gamma reader. Uh, 32. PGR. And... No, you're not putting them together. No, no, just 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 the value from the polyhedral gamma reader, um, which is a three. <laughs> And you subtract because thirty-two is really old. <laughs> the uh, holographic anti-gamma display above your head, which is two. Uh, so you subtract two from three, and then, uh, quite simply, you add that to the to the fifty. Okay. You have a fifty-one, darling. Yes. Fifty-one. Oh, okay. Thank you. He pats you on the knee. Good job. Good job. You are on your way to being a, uh, a a paragon of morality in, oh, another 20 years or so. When you are also very old, like some of us who are over 32. <clears throat> that was a long well, that, that's, time that's ago. That's a really long time from now. Oh. Oh. Skip. Uh, uh, what, what, what about you, um, Trandoshan person? My name is Cash. One syllable. How hard Cash. is it to remember? Fine, I'll roll this. Okay, well, I also got a three. Ah, well, superb. This, in fact, <clears throat> gives us a, a an excellent point of comparison. Now, your Gamo reader uh, produced a three, just as, as Skips did. And uh, <clears throat> your... Oh, holographic anti gamma display reads, um, I believe that is a six. Now, you may say, but wait, if I'm supposed to subtract the uh, HAGD from the PGR, um, this results in negative numbers, to which I would say, yes. Being as the result is negative, that means your gamma total will go down, uh, in this case by 3. Uh, 3 minus 6 being negative 3. Uh, carry the carry the 7. And <clears throat> so you, you are at 47 gamos. You are a 6% worse person than you were Fascinating. before. I disagree with your mathematics. Oh, it's but... quite thoroughly researched. <laughs> Oh, sure, sure. I am merely punching the numbers. Crunching the numbers. Mm-hmm. 
And now for the mysterious Koba. You better stay over there, Zexta. This all sounds like nonsense to me. Oh, Mr. Doug, it is not nonsense at all. It's <laughs> peer-reviewed, you know, here and back or something. Fine, as long as I get something better than cash. That is unfair. Uh. <laughs> oh, uh, mm, this is actually uh, quite unexpected, if you ask me, frankly. Um, it seems that your uh, PGR has produced a nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best episode ever, by the way. Throwing that out there. Uh, so th the mathematics here are actually quite simple. Nine minus the six uh, in the HADD above your head. And um, that means you've gained three gamos, uh, despite your best efforts to the contrary. This system is flawed and it's speciesist. And Koba is not six points better than me. I don't know. I don't see a problem with it. <sighs> Wait, so does that mean that Kekesh is six points meaner than Koba? Uh, yes, scientifically, that is exactly what it means. Oh, okay, you, you know how, <laughs> how this whole thing is flawed? Koba is not a better person than Skip. Uh, or are they? <laughs> Perhaps it's just that Skip has not had enough time to be better. Skip is the youngest of us all, being the protagonist. Uh, G Gamo's uh, theories are applying extremely complicated mathematics to extremely abstract concepts, and <clears throat> it is not always apparent why the values come out the way they do, but I assure you the, the uh, research is quite quite thorough that this is a meaningful measure well i hate this system now and now i think i'm just going to try to get my number as low as possible i think it makes a lot of sense i think it means that really we have a lot to be optimistic about that koba is actually really good and can help a lot of people even though koba doesn't really seem to want to help anyone i would like to also point out that this system is rating um something that's force related and the force is in and of itself kind of something we use so perhaps there is a strength to be found in the lower numbers not necessarily but you no should shoot i should for have them. the highest score it's a score <laughs> no you have your own score with the keeper cash this is it's zero now <laughs> This is this in my week. <laughs> Walther! Walther! Save us! And that's all well, the time. Well, the good news is... <laughs> Lorenzo is just, like, having a field day, standing the camera back and forth to all this drama. It's... I'm just glad the map recognizes that. Dramatically. Sometimes the, the quick and easy path is not the best way to help things. Glares at Kesh. Fumes. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Nighttime on the Hydean Way. You can find Trump dates on Twitter at the Hydean Way, and you can find me, Ben, or Walther, on Twitter at Deuterium Ice. I suppose you can find Lorenzo or Skip or me, Ren, at Atomic Firebird or Fast. Times D and D, so Leslie doesn't yell at me for not promoting all my own stuff. <laughs> yeah. And you can find me on Twitter at Twelfth Night. That's one two T H and Night with a K. And you can find me at Leslie GS along with all of the other uh, I play, including one that is actually going to be on Force Majeure, and it's not a mistake what I say. Force Majeure this time instead of Flight Risk. And so it's zero. And whatever. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can find me 
on Twitter at Blue of the Ken. Uh, or if you would like to experience a Star Trek actual play, you can find that at Endeavor Show on Twitter. E N D E A V O U R Show. Modi would spell Endeavor with a U. It's the proper way to spell it. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Says the Canadian. Now I kind of wish we had done the whole thing in uh, <laughs> whole outro in character. <laughs> Thank you, and we are all at thehydeanway.com, where you can find previous episodes and things we discuss in this episode that have links outside of the show. Like, if you need to remember why I'm doing this voice about, you know, the Shadow fan stuff or whatever. Uh, oh, wait, we're, I, I don't have the website one. Never mind. Scratch that. Starting over. <clears throat> totally forgot which one I had. <clears throat> And uh, you can find more episodes on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and the Google Podcasts. And uh, plus, you can help us out by rating, reviewing, and subscribing and telling everyone what a great camera that I am. We're also on Facebook. What's a Facebook? As Heroes of the Hydean Way, you can holocom us at heroes at com. I'm glad that you know what a holocom is, Kesh. I was going to be concerned. Ouch. It is Facebook. It is Facebook. Oh, and I hear, oh, oh, it, it was I misspelled that, here. That, I hear that Vuren is becoming quite the, the Facebook influencer. Is this planet even on the Hydean way? Shh. Well, if you like what we do and want to support the show, you can uh, go over to patreon.com slash the Hydean way and do so. Sorry, I was trying to like find a way to barrow it into this last one, but I don't, I don't see it. Um, <laughs> also, that would that would actually require Ben to do things to my voice. Just have to pitch up. I was thinking about doing Billy, uh, which is why I didn't do Billy. <laughs> also, why I didn't do Cav. I was very, very tempted yeah. though. And if you would like to uh, tip the the PAs who have gotten all of your calf for you during this show, you can toss a cred to them at ko-fi.com slash the Hydean way. <laughs> all, all, all of your little noises, everyone is so predictable now. It's wonderful. Like every time we do the clap and then somebody leans back in their chair. I don't know who it is, but somebody every time there's the clap and then a creak of somebody leaning back in their chair. It's probably me. I hate this chair. <laughs> It's I was just, laughing because Christine and Brandon familiar, were in sync. Familiar family noises. I don't know. It's nice. Okay, 10 seconds of silence. Comfortable. Sorry. I missed you. Look, I knew the smartest investigator that Mal Stair had ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up. Here we go. <laughs> right up to the day when he lost his title. As, as Koba, the Doug investigator. I knew a lot of detectives in my time. No, what is the digital root of? <laughs> no! It's, it's still zero. <laughs> no. Oh, good. Now we're into math jokes. It doesn't, See what you started, Skip? It doesn't get complicated until you're at double-digit numbers. None of us are. <laughs> the crossover nobody wanted. I wanted it. <laughs> the one that no one expected. Right. Oh, no. Mathematicians of the Hydean way? No, it's uh <laughs> the game bread it's been playing. Uh it's a oh. it's a thing that nine hours, nine persons, nine doors uses a lot. Yeah, yeah Ben and Ben and I have been popping in the chat periodically. Yeah. Being perplexed. <laughs> Cav <laughs> <laughs> Not what I said. <laughs> Crates. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would. I would just start speaking as Cav now, but uh, I'm not going to make Ben have to do that. That, uh, that edit. So, yeah. <laughs> Series of filters. You threw me off. I was about to like make some sort of tangent about how Skip should totally not be allowed to drink Cav, but yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> oh, I'll put Ben in that. Push, push. I, I really need to go listen to that sometime. Cabbage noises. Because <laughs> I still don't get it. <laughs> Sepulveda. Uh, Port Haven. Cabbage, 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 cabbage. <laughs> <laughs>
Did you know that when you broke open a cabbage, it actually says cabbage? <laughs> cabbage. Jeez, Unless it's fancy, really then it says cabbage. Squeak. You know, it's, it's like a Pokemon. <laughs> cabbage. Cab? Cabbage. And we're back. Uh, sure. <laughs> right. I don't. Th- this must be what going mad feels like. Tuning back in in three, two. <laughs> Sorry, the judgment day thing is just. <laughs> I I need I need an all Koba stream now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that would that'd be hilarious. What would Koba play? It's on a channel named after a Salonian. <laughs> <laughs> misdirection. The layers. Classic misdirection. I remember this. I had one for my uh, crates, crates, caverns and crates game when I was young. It's great wow, fun. you just you just went a little tychus there. I did, didn't I? <laughs> that was amazing. Sorry, Adam. Crates, crates, the crate. All right, I'm back. So is my swoop bike. Okay, now give us your human impression. <laughs> I don't know that that's possible. Should I be offended by that statement? I don't know. I no. don't know that I want to be a human right now. I was I was reaching it's for a dragon, dragon prince dragon joke. Dragon prince reference. Uh-huh. Would you like some of this pop maze too? No. Ren? Um, sorry, Ren. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some of this pop maze too? Skip. It's quite tasty. Oh wait, you were. I got so confused by you yeah, using my I name. Apologize. I was just like, I wait, what? Myself. At this point, I was just talking to you. Apparently, you want some popcorn? <laughs> Jedi theorist. Uh, I, I don't know a name. A name. <laughs> a name. Um, Finregard. Feralus. Gamo. And I'm sorry, I shortened it to a Star Wars name. That's okay. <laughs> I, I I was just looking for the FFG. Yep. <laughs> so so did Cash and Koba accrue any um conflict in this episode? <laughs> I tried. There was a punch thrown. Ish. Hey, I only use light side points for the move, but I did get very angry. <laughs> Uh, the thing that wasn't said, if, by the way, is that conflict all now goes down to zero. Yeah. Whenever we yeah. roll, okay, you start so we're now back zero at conflict down. zero, so your morality changes, yeah. and then you are back to um, having no points of conflict. And I am morality yep. 59. We need to make you evil. I mean, just a you little bit. <laughs> you know, we, 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 gotta, we gotta halt your, your ascension. Oh, come now. You just I mean, don't want me to be able to fly. I'd be a great space hand, jellyfish. Uh, like, <laughs> having a paragon in the party is pretty handy. Yeah, but when, when Kesh falls, we'll just cancel mm. each other out. Not exactly. Not really. Yep. I will be so much worse for us. 